afternoon everyone i am odette charles so we are speaking of resilience what does resilience mean and according to um miriam webster's dictionary resilience means the ability to recover from or adjust easily to a misfortune or change however frederick Hubler, head of UNESCO UNIVOC, says resilience is the capacity to persist, adapt, and transform in the face of change. We are going to look at how MIC Institute of Technology actually adapted and continued in the force of change. Uh, my colleague will now take it from here. Good afternoon. I am Carol Mitchell. So we are going to talk about COVID at MIC Institute of Technology, or the teaching and training practices at MIC Institute of Technology, pre-COVID, post-COVID, and during COVID. Let's look at the pre-COVID. Now, this is not unique to MIC Institute of Technology. Before COVID, you will have student or teacher-centered sessions where the students will come to a class, to come to the classroom and institution, and instru instruction would be facilitated. Let's talk about during COVID. Now, COVID has literally brought us out of the Stone Age into the 21st century. We now had a time, our era, in our, in our teaching and learning practices where we cannot face-to-face -face interact with our students directly. So we had to come up with new plans. What did we do at MIC Institute of Technology? Some of us would have known about Zoom. Most of us never knew about Moodle or Teams or never thought that using WhatsApp would be a measure to facilitate a, a teaching session. However, we became innovative. We adapted. We had to to survive, to be sus sustainable. We used Moodle. Moodle had a platform where to facilitate video conferencing, Big Blue Button. I'm positive most of us never knew that Big Blue Button existed. We migrated from Big Blue Button to Teams. Some of us use Zoom, and some of us still use WhatsApp to facilitate at times. Let's look at post-COVID. Where are we now at MIC Institute of Technology pertaining to teaching and learning after COVID? We have been resilient with the technology that has been used, with the technology that we have been forced to use, and we are presently now using all the technologies. But let me just go back a bit to the pre-COVID or during COVID. We had to train our instructors to use the technology. We had challenges such as low bandwidth, no devices, no knowledge of how to use online facilitation. Those were some of the challenges the physical challenges that we endure. We also endure emotional challenges where instructors, everybody knew at that time, some of us, it was so overwhelming. Even during COVID when we had classes facilitated online, it, some of the major challenges were a space, even though you are at home facilitating a class, students would encounter either they had no device or even no internet access. Those were the challenges we experienced. Other challenge we, challenges we had was resistance. Some of us resisted change. But you know what? We did not have a choice. We had to adapt. We became resilient and we are sustainable. As spoken before, some of the platforms that were used and is still being used today, Teams, Microsoft Teams, Moodle, we communicate with our students via WhatsApp, 
emails. We even had Edmodo as some of the platforms that we used at MICIT to facilitate our classes. Now, based on the, the speech or the introductory, the introductory speaker from the Minister of St. Lucia this morning, he said we had to readapt, we had to reimagine. We at MIC had to reimagine and we had to rework to make ourselves become sustainable. I will now hand you over to my general manager who will talk to the trainee adaptation, what we would have done, the information gathered based on this research, to give you more information on trainees adaptation. Okay, thanks, Carl. So pretty much um, during the period, we would have done some surveys, as I mentioned. One of the survey that we conducted was to see how the trainees would have adapted during the period, right? Um, as you can see up on the slide, when the instructors were um, surveyed, they were asked if the trainees would have been able to adapt to the needs of online learning. And as you can see, the responses were as follows. So 57.3% they responded negatively in that they didn't really think that they, that they would have adapted positively in that sort of learning environment. 85% indicated that they think trainees do not or did not have the access to the necessary resources and this is comparable to all the research that we would have seen thus far. 53% um, also indicated that they felt the trainees lacked the discipline to participate in online learning. We heard from our colleagues in NESC that they would mention that some of the trainees, you know, the training would be online and they weren't there. They weren't, they weren't visibly present. 44% um, also indicated that they do not believe that the trainees would have had the necessary levels of computer literacy to participate in that online learning. So that would have caused that challenge there. Right, so some of the thematic areas that emerged out of our studies would have been the access to resources, the stakeholder competence, that being the instructors as well as trainees, um, the socioeconomic stimulants, that being where the trainees would have been able to have teaching and learning sessions. Many of them, we know the, the, the audience, our trainee audience, where they come from, that socioeconomic background. They would not have had stable environments to have positive learning outcomes. Um, also, trainee assessments was a bit of a challenge to be delivered as well. All right, so from the feedback from our trainees, what we would have asked them is what, um, is it that they would have been able to, or how we could be able to improve MICIT's response to the pandemic? And the follow th following thematic areas would have emerged there was a concern for their peers, those who had the resources, they would have had some concerns with regards to those who didn't. Um, there was also some comfort areas. They indicated that they were comforted by being, you know, that communication line with their instructors and even members of our guidance and counseling unit who would have reached out and conducted various workshops with them. Um, and more importantly, that lack of resources, that lack of um, technical resources. So now I'll hand you over to Ms. Charles. Yeah. Continued um, learning environment. A lot, a lot of them were very concerned with that because for many of them, home was not conducive for learning. In some cases, we had trainees. There might be five first five children to a household, one device. So they would have to select who would use that device and we know that, that academic education is given preference over um, the TVET education. So conducive home um, environment for learning, that was one of the things that came out. They would have asked for extension of training, supported, supp they wanted that extension of training period because of the shutdown. So of course they would have been exposed to a lot of practical um, theory, sorry, and they needed now to connect that knowledge, uh, the theory knowledge with, with the, uh, the skill part of it, which is the practical um, session. Trainees, so they were further asked to leave or, um, additional comments or suggestions, and these were what have some of the outcomes under the same thematic areas that emerged. And their main concerns were about attempts to instruct 
without hands-on experience. It was a major challenge for a lot of our trainees. So that was one of the areas they, would want, they wanted us to focus on when it comes to us planning and preparing, should we have another experience like this. And then we look now at staff feedback. So we would have spoken to the staff. 51.6% felt that the effort at that time was very minimal and was minimally effective, if effective at all. 48.4% said the efforts were somewhat effective and 83.3% said that these efforts, those that were effective, should be continued into our post-pandemic practices. So we are going to now look at where we are now post-COVID-19. Mr. Langer. All right, so we are pretty much now to the most important part. And I know some of our presenters before I mean, our major sessions would have spoken to some of this right now. So our current state is that we would have built capacity with our instructors um, in terms of delivering that ICT component um, to them. We also looked at some of the teaching and learning experiences and would have sought to enhance that for our trainees um, in the form of providing access to tablets, computers. Um, it would have been heavy on the financial side, but we would have had to find some way to see how we could have made that provision. There was also major revision to some of our policies incorporating that blended learning aspect. And more importantly, that aspect of developing teaching and learning materials that we can have online in an online database that we can sort of recycle and use accordingly. So what were some of the lessons learned? Um, so one, there's a need to further develop the digital learning um, strategy. We also need to create that digital journey or plan for staff in terms of developing their capacity, um, maybe to navigate in an LMS system, also to have that change management in terms of being able to be adaptable, being able to be more agile to change. So we'd have done some training to some of our administrators who, because of the fact that we have satellite centers across the country, they would oversee and we would have done some supervisory management TIVA training with them. Um, we would have looked at um, developing a business continuity plan in terms of when there's major disasters or disruptances. We would have looked at also the organizational culture and structure and change to sort of suit that sort of change management and the, and the way that we would want to go forward. Um, we also looked at our lines of communication and to ensure that that communication structure was indeed robust to withstand any crisis situation. And while well, we have speak, spoken to you know, development of staff in the appropriate digital skills area. So um, according to the British Council, they indicated that TVED institutions showed resilience, creativity, and entrepreneurship during the pandemic. The efficiency, sustainability, and legacy of the changes brought about by COVID-19 suggests that a complete return to pre-pandemic TVET policy and practice is really unlikely. And we have seen it here. There's a lot of changes, and in going forward, it's really hard to go back to what we would have done before. And it would have brought about efficiency, and I know that is no news to some of us who are in that environment in TVET institutions. So what are some of the strategies for sustainability in TVET? Um, I know some of you all are in the environment and you all would agree to some of those strategies because you all are employing it already. So we have that hybrid learning, um, pretty much that blending learning component in the TVET. We also had policy adaptation, changing to accommodate that blended aspect. Um, aligning TVET with the digital technologies. We know that in the industry, there would have been a lot of changes, um, the incorporation of Industry 4.0, and the need to align TVET to that. Um, developing stronger partnerships. So before, if it is that we did not have that closer tie or closer relationship and collaboration with industry, 
we had to strengthen that. We heard about demand-driven training this morning, and that is one area that we had to look to as opposed to the other aspect of training, supply-driven. Um, we looked at providing training so that learners can develop agile skill sets, um, lifelong learning and whatnot, and continuous professional development for staff. And also, we would have shifted the majority of our programs to that process-based learning, that more trainee or student-centered approach. So just to give an idea of some of our strategies that are currently in action, so the staff development, we are currently liaising with our partner um, in Germany to deliver master craftsman skills training in mechatronics and also solar um, renewable technologies. We, I would have mentioned supervisory management training for our TVET administrators and also the training with curriculum. Um, we looked at also micro-credentialing, taking some of our larger or longer duration program that would be two years and longer and breaking them up into shorter versions. And that would have come out of our newly developed short courses unit. We also looked at curriculum adaptation, which is looking at incorporating online educational resources um, and different types of other learning strategies. There is also a greater emphasis for ICTs and the inclusion of entrepreneurship. So we would have developed a BizStart um, unit that is partnered with our national entrepreneurship um, program in Trinidad. And there was also spoke to partnerships and collaborations. And that would have spoken to signing of various MOUs, developing collaborations and more um, strategic partnerships as we move forward to help bolster our resources. And that pretty much brings us to the end of our presentation and thank you.